Let's refill your mind with spooky, true crime stories of the deranged, unhinged, and absolute pure evil murders that will blow your mind. Some places you will visit to show you around and educate you on the history. Other times we will bring you to the paranormal because the dead never lie silent for too long. It'll be the last time anybody sees us alive. I don't know where she has us, but we're gonna get something killed. Hello? Gina, there is a beehive over there. Do you see that in the hole? Buckle up, Buttercup. Welcome to 50 States of Man. Welcome to 50 States of Madness. Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome. I'm Shannon. I'm Gina. Yes. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It is. Yeah. Brand new, 2024. That's right. No more Christmas backgrounds. Yeah, <laughs> no, not anymore. No. I even cleaned up all my Christmas decorations at my house. Shit, mine was gone the day after Christmas. I. That's me usually. Like Only because we got our Christmas tree the day after Thanksgiving and my Christmas tree by like December 20th. Maybe before that was like <laughs> wilted, like it was dry. Yeah, like the ornaments started falling oh. off, and so my Christmas tree is fake. Um, <clears throat> we have a debate in our home, but I'm the one who has to clean up the needles. I'm the one who has to, so I just don't do fake, and I don't for that reason too. I don't want to worry about it drying up. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it, having a real one, but it smells really nice mm-hmm. and it looks really nice, and it's fun going out getting it. But yeah, we got ours from Costco, mm-hmm. and. Which is which is good. The only thing I don't like about Costco is you can't look at it. I know you they buy them wrapped. bundled up already. Yeah. Um, and every year we've got them. I have to say this is the worst year so far. It didn't really? smell. Oh really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? Actually, come to think of it, when I came to your house, it yeah. wasn't like a oh. oh Normally, it's Christmas. like overwhelming. Yeah. So we've been burning uh, pine scented <laughs> candles. <laughs> There's these little things that you can hang on your fake tree yeah, that look like ornaments that smell like pine. Yeah. So that's what I put up on mine. And I like them because you can get them like cinnamon pine and right, right. things that smell really good. Yeah. So I put them up on mine and I have a fake tree every year and I love it. And I usually take them down the day after Christmas. I'm, I'm really big on because I put them up before thanksgiving right so i take it down the day after thanksgiving well if it's a fake tree then i can keep it up yeah Yeah. as long as i want whenever i want but um i don't like to have the clutter like as soon Mm -hmm. as christmas is done i'm just clean it all up but last week was really really busy week so i did it yesterday yeah wrapped it all up the day after thanksgiving and i was actually happy that i kept it up you know we had the lights going yeah we had the lights on it looks nice yeah yeah, i like it but i'm glad the holidays are over Mm-hmm. it's a lot but yeah I you had like, a big holiday oh my god I feel like every single day I'm just like oh good lord yeah yeah it was something every day <laughs> yeah <laughs> literally you had a big big holiday yeah but there was a lot of things in the news and we've been trying to pop on keep up on it and everything yeah. so there was one thing came up that we didn't want to ignore but we didn't get to right away but it was the story of Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerrera mm-hmm. who were found well, who went missing at first? Right, didn't know where they were. Not that long ago. No, they went missing like December twenty second. Was it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was December twenty second was the last time they were seen? Yeah. We love her. We miss her. Whatever's going on, let her come home. Christmas night, a group of family, friends, and even strangers praying for Savannah Soto's safe return. The pregnant teen was last seen leaving her apartment at Valencia Lofts around two Friday afternoon. Her family noticed something was off when she didn't show up to her hospital appointment Saturday night to be induced. She's more than a week past due. We just pray to God every day, every night, every day, every minute, every second of the day, we pray to God to bring her home, to bring her home safely because we need her home to complete my family again. Her grandmother, Rachel Soto, says her granddaughter had the nursery ready and the baby's name picked out. She was so thrilled and excited about being a mom. She had everything ready for her little boy. And a clear alert issued Monday. It states Soto could be in a gray 2013 Kia Optima with a temporary Texas tag 4289D57. The family says she was living with her boyfriend and father of her unborn baby. They say they have yet to make contact with him either. It's not normal. Something's not adding up here. I want answers and we all want answers. All the family wants is to know Savannah and her baby boy are safe. This is her picture here. 
She's a beautiful girl and she's a beautiful heart. She'll help anybody. And I want somebody to help us to bring her back home. Um, December 23rd, the family knew something was wrong because she was supposed to be induced because she was a week late. She was pregnant with a baby boy named Fabian. And she didn't show up for her appointment. Family hadn't heard from her. People were trying to get a hold of her. They were trying to get a hold of Matthew. But I didn't think much about it. Like, I knew that there was something going on. Yeah. They were missing. But then they turn up dead yeah, in a they vehicle. Mm -hmm. They found him dead in a vehicle. on Well, on Christmas Day, the family held a vigil for Savannah and Matthew, but for the family, family. of Savannah yeah. had held a vigil on Christmas Day, help us find her. Um, Savannah's sister-in-law got a tip that Savannah's Kia was parked in a in an apartment complex about three miles away from her apartment complex. And so she went over there. She saw a lot of blood, didn't want to get close. She didn't want to believe that it was her sister-in-law and that she had passed away. And so the cops were called, and it turned out that it was Matthew and Savannah, unfortunately, yeah. were found dead. Two gunshot wounds, one one for each body. Yeah. A gunshot wound um, behind the right ear of each one, yeah. which initially when you first heard that it was a gunshot wound to the head, I, I don't know about anybody else, but my thought went to murder-suicide. Yeah. I thought, oh. And I didn't know any history on these two. Yeah. And this happened in San Antonio, Texas, by the way. And she was found in the front seat and he was found in the back seat, I believe. Yes. But there was a lot of talk about how they were found because yeah. at first it was said that it was reversed that he was in the front seat and she was in the back seat but, but then that's not how it was and then wasn't she found with the baby carrier on her lap on her lap so there like that goes to show you that maybe other people were in the vehicle because the baby seat was initially in the back seat and if they were both riding in the front with their own you know will yeah. to ride in the car that she wouldn't have the car seat on top of her lap. Right. And then when you start looking into the history of Matthew, you do see that he did have a history of being abusive towards Savannah. Yes. A neighbor had actually seen them fighting. She said they would fight all the time in the apartment complex they lived in. That at one point, the neighbor had seen them fighting outside. He was kicking and punching her. She was unconscious, knocked down the stairs. The neighbor called 911. That was like a year prior, almost yeah. exactly a year prior. Yeah. He was convicted and he was ordered to go take some classes. Yeah, anger and management classes or something yeah. of the sort. I know there's a huge debate between the families too at the time before when they first found the bodies or before when they were missing right because when they were missing there was a lot of facebook posts and things like please help us find you know savannah and her boyfriend matthew and the sister-in-law that received the tip mm -hmm. she actually posted on facebook like something to the effect of hey um you know we don't want you to be one of the statistics mm -hmm. of an abusive relationship so right they Savannah's family kind of hinted towards that he was abusive. It wasn't confirmed at the time, but the mom came back and, you know, like a typical mom, which I would probably do too, you know, protect my baby, you know, like, yeah. cause people were kind of speculating that Matthew might've had something to do with it. Well, based on his history of violence, first of all, drug activity, um, you want to elaborate it, on that one because they, yeah, there were there were some uh, social media posts made by Matthew, and I believe Savannah was in one the one of the pictures that I saw. I don't know if it was an Instagram post, TikTok, whatever the case may be. Um, it was a picture of him and Savannah, I believe, sitting in a car. She was posing next to him, and he had a stack of money that was <laughs> just a huge stack of money, and. You know, you have to wonder where that money is coming from. He did have a lot of posts on social media of different drug paraphernalia. So he was. He was dealing. He was dealing drugs. And so with that kind of history on top of all of the violence, her, him knocking her down the stairs, him having to do these anger management classes, it would lead one to believe that he might be involved somehow in her you know 
being missing. Missing. And if not him directly, like because of his activity. Something. Yes. Had something to do with both of them. Right. Being killed. So Matthew's mother had posted, if anyone knows my son, Matthew Goodetta, he and his pregnant girlfriend are missing. I know my son and he wouldn't do anything to hurt her. She is due to have a baby. Oh, she was due to have her. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Wouldn't do anything to hurt her. She is due to have baby. Her things were left behind and she packed for hospital, including her purse. The neighbors said they heard Savannah screaming for help. And the next morning they said, saw them got get into a Cadillac. My son's phone says the caller is unavailable and their car is not at their apartment. As a mother, I know my son and his girlfriend were taken against their will because my son does what he does for money. And so she kind of alludes that she yes. knew what he did. Yeah. Since then, that post was taken down. Yeah. Uh, because. I mean, okay. it's kind of incriminating. Yeah. If you think about it. I mean, she's not real clear on what he does for money, but just the fact that you say he does what he does for money leads you to believe that it might be something yeah. illegal or. And because of his social media post. Yes. So then the sister-in-law kind of screenshots before the mother took it down yeah. the post and reshares the post and says, this is bullshit. Yeah. You know, your son was abusive to my sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. She'd come with bruises and everything on her face to the family. And apparently it happened quite often. It wasn't that something she, that she yeah, wanted a time time thing. Yeah. No. And I know that his father has come out along with the stepmother and yeah. has done interviews regarding it, not necessarily regarding, but regarding their debts, not necessarily regarding the abuse. They said that though, although they know of the history of it and what occurred last December, that they were actually on good terms. Gabriel knows Matthew was arrested in 2022 for domestic abuse against Savannah and even suggested Matthew stay in custody longer. They had contacted each other on the phone and that was a violation so they can please keep him in there and unfortunately uh, it would have to be Savannah to say that and she she wouldn't do it so eventually he was let out. Domestic abuse charges were never filed again. Gabriel and his wife Raquel say the couple was inseparable and seemed happy. That's why they don't believe Matthew could have hurt Savannah but they want to find who did. It's got to be something personal. I mean I don't know what kind of person or could could do that to a, a pregnant you know, individual. Yeah, and I know Matthew had an arrest record. He was arrested in 2021, in January of 2022, of weapons charges. Yeah, he had, yeah, he definitely had a yeah. rap sheet, especially for his age. Oh, yeah. And, and he th- was much old. Well, I don't want to say he much was 22. older. But at the time they started dating, I think she was. 15 and yeah. he was 19 he she was a my she was little and she's, she's a little thing she's maybe five feet tall she's half his size <laughs> yeah so he's very tall and she's very very small so um and, and i know as recently as august 2023 he was arrested for reckless driving mm-hmm. weapons charge evading arrest so he but i really don't think that had anything like it's his no. dr- it's his drug history of course and and like we've said multiple times before just because people have this kind of history doesn't make them a murder either. No. Doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean anything. But it does kind of shine a light on his, you know, how he lives his life, the things that he's involved with, and unfortunately the things that come with that lifestyle. Right. And they really do believe that he had nothing to do with it. And I don't think anything really points to it because if you're shot in the yeah, back of the I right don't, I don't think ear, he did it. No. However, I do think that there were some, it was, it was done in response to something that he did or, I mean, there's a whole other part to this also. Yes. That could be. There's a lot of different scenarios that can take place in this. Yeah. Because, because of the drug activity and because of the history of both families. Yeah. The, um, and also. When they did, authorities are saying there was no gun in the car found. Right. So if it was self-inflicted, there, would, there be, would be a gun. There would be a gun. So it's already, he has nothing to do with it. We already know that. Um, also, since then, a video has come out. Um, the Kia mm-hmm. that Savannah drove and a truck that meet up close to those apartment complex. And you see people getting out and wiping the, down the vehicle. Yeah. 
it's disturbing to think that their bodies might have been in the vehicle at the yeah. time that this was happening. Why else would they be, you know, Cause, cleaning yeah. stuff up and... Yeah, but they were found in this vehicle. So uh, this is where I'm, I don't know the timestamp of this. Right. And we don't know when we they We don't know when away. they, no, but I know that the, the coroners did say that their bodies had been in there for three to four days, I believe. So probably so the they, night were, they were taken. Yeah, so they were probably killed the same day that they were taken. And they have the video of these ve- this vehicle meeting up with the truck. This guy gets out. There's a couple of speculations who this man might be and it's it's not a super super clear it's not video unfortunately so it's not easy to just look at it and be like oh yeah it's you know yeah. that's, it appears that's to be, who it is it appears to be one man and one woman that you can see you know there's somebody in the truck yes that the man gets out of that the guy gets out of because you see them hand him a roll of paper towels mm-hmm onto his side but it is very grainy you can't get a good Mm -hmm. shot of it you can like enhance that stuff too so I feel like once people get a hold of that video and kind of you know work things out they can zoom in and make things clearer yeah um so hopefully they can release it and maybe people will be able to identify them I feel like there's a lot of evidence out there and so I do, I mean, I hope, but I do believe too that it will be solved pretty quickly. Yeah. There's a lot of video camera. Because there's a lot of stuff out there. And like we said before, if they want to find people, yeah. they can. I mean, they can trace a vehicle moving down a street. Yes. You know, so you'll be able to find out where yeah, that, you those can, vehicles started, where they ended up. I feel like this one will, will like you said, will get yeah. solved quickly because of the video. And I don't feel like there's anybody they're really trying to cover up or hide. No, I, would think. I think that it also is with, you know, you have the fact that him, that Matthew was involved in the lifestyle that he was. But then you also have to take a look at Savannah because her brother was murdered yeah. A year prior to this also. The Soto family has lost two members in the past year. Their 15-year-old son, Ethan, and pregnant 18-year-old daughter, Savannah. So this is what we know. The first sibling to pass was Ethan, who was shot on May 16th as a result of a revenge for a drug robbery. New this morning, we now know the name of a teenager who died following a shooting on the city's west side. San Antonio police say 15-year-old Ethan Soto was found dead in the middle of the street near where he lived. Now, this happened on Alston Street near Greenside Road around 3 yesterday afternoon. The victim's brother told police he was going to meet someone about money. Police say an argument started that ended with that teen being killed. Two other teens were detained following the shooting. The name of the suspects have not been released. And I have to say the drug robbery was over 60. It was over $60. Like that's all it was. $60. He had um, taken, I guess, some cartridges of some sort. Victor Rivas, 18-year-old who wasn't happy with Soto for stealing THC-related drugs. The weed. So it's weed, right? But I think it was just cartridges yeah. that he sold. They sell, like, mm-hmm. the what is it, the liquid weed or whatever? They smoke well, it yeah. through the... Okay. Yeah, the vape. Oh, the vape. Thank you. <laughs> She's educating me. I guess apparently he tried to attempt to shoot him, and he didn't injure him. Like, he shot at the home, this Victor Rivas at 18, um, Ethan doesn't get hurt. So then this guy, Victor attempts to do it again by using an underage girl, luring him through Instagram mm-hmm. as you know, she poses as somebody who wants to buy right. some drugs. So to set him up, so he gets Ethan out of his home and he shoots him. Savannah's mother knew that Ethan was in trouble about with these drugs. Right. So she actually tried to pay the drug dealer $60, the $60 he owed. He didn't want doesn't work that way. Yeah. He didn't want the money. He wanted to get revenge. Let's fast forward to when this guy Victor's in court being charged. The Soto family attacks the guy in the courthouse. But it, I guess it went Crazy. viral last year. Yeah. I don't remember this I at didn't, all. I didn't see it until just recently. Yeah. Me too. And yeah. I'm on TikTok a lot. I'm not, but I, yeah, I, I didn't hear anything of it, but it is... Yeah, I didn't know anything about it either. Yes, but it's, it's a pr- crazy. like, and you actually see Savannah jumping over, <laughs> going to attack, and I guess apparently 
uh, Matthew Guerrero is in the courtroom as well with Savannah and goes after yes. this guy, Victor, as yes. well. There's speculation that it also might be revenge because of this particular incident. Yes. So, I mean, that's a lot to look at. And that's why I feel like as soon as people clear up the videos and maybe enhance it a little bit, it'll be a little more clear as to who it is. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot to look at, you know, and uh, like I said, in all fairness, you have to look at both sides because as obvious as it may look that it might be something that he's connected to, it could definitely be something that she was connected to also by yeah. no fault of her own. No. By just to being her brother. Yeah. There's a lot of theories out there and there, there are a lot of people that do put a lot of work into like trying to solve things, but there's also a lot of people who also make up their own theories and then it just yeah. grows from there. But this one is an ongoing investigation. Um, the new, it's changing all the time. Yeah. Okay. So we have a little update. Um, since we did our recording. I, yeah. And we said that we thought things would come to a close quickly and they actually did hours within us <laughs> after us recording. Right after we recorded. Yeah, literally hours um, later, two, uh, two people were caught. Yeah. It was a father and a son, uh, Ramon Preciado and his son, Christopher, uh, 19 years old, dad's 53. And- <clears throat> yeah and it was like we kind of figured a drug deal gone wrong mm -hmm. um so they're in custody and we'll see what happens good. Um, good for that I was watching a like a news clip on it and they said that those were the only suspects in yeah it, that they were looking for, um, even though they were talking about the internet going crazy, and we did. This evening, the first individual's name is Ramon Preciado, 53 years old, SID number 443651. The second individual was Christopher Preciado, 19 years old, SID number 1191061. So the two individuals we, uh, we just walked out today, again, is a father and son. The first individual is a father, the second individual is a son. Uh, they're going to be charged. The, the father's, uh, I'm sorry, the son's going to be charged this this, after, this evening with capital murder, and the father's going to be charged with abuse of a corpse. So we do expect uh, more charges to be uh, to be pending. So I'm not going to go into the whole thing. We we all know uh, what kind of led us to this to to where we are today. Um, I will say that when we recover, or when when uh, the bodies were discovered on Danny K, uh, obviously the investigation began. SAPD detectives made that location and started collecting evidence. Um, one of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was uh, Savannah's cell phone. And uh, so our, that was given, handed over to our tech, our technology team, who was able to do the download some information on there. With the assistance of the U.S. Secret Service, we were able to get enough information. Um, and so that, that information was given to our detectives today. With that information, the detective... Uh, the Texans were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. They made that location, and sure enough, the vehicle was there. They did a little bit of surveillance on the video or on the, on the uh, vehicle, and then uh, were able to determine which house it belonged to. They went up, knocked on the door. Uh, the, fir the first gentleman, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the first individual, uh, the father answered the door. He knew why the police were there. Um, was was cooperated fully with the investigation. We're right here to headquarters, and our detectives were able to start interviewing both the son and the father. Again, they were both at the home. They were both brought down here, and the and the um, interrogations began. Um, through interrogating the individuals, the uh, our detectives had enough. Uh, based on what they said, there was enough information there to get a warrant signed by a judge tonight again to charge christopher with capital murder and ramon with uh, abuse of a corpse again there will be more charges pending this is what we have right now i'll answer any questions uh, did you do the capital murder for the sign and then abuse of the corpse charge from that does that mean that you guys believe the son killed them and then the Absolutely. dad helped hide the bodies yes 
Yes. And um, so I want to touch base on something real quick. The, since the release of the video that we set, that we put out on the 28th, uh, there has been, internet has blown up with um, people sending tips and people just sending misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation out there. These two individuals are to, are the only sus suspects that we were looking for. They, they were arrested. There were many names being thrown around on the internet. Uh, those people had nothing to do with this. We, we vetted them and, and everything. They, they didn't have anything to do with these murders. So the individual, that, again, Christopher, uh, we believe committed the murders of, of Matthew and Savannah. And then Ramon uh, helped. Do you think why did you um, it, it appears to be a narcotics, a narcotic related deal that, that went bad. Do we know the connection between this father and son and Matthew and Savannah or the uh, connection to the apartment complex? So there's no apparent connection to the apartment complex. It's just a place where they want to go dump the, the spo or hide the vehicle with the bodies in it. And it appears that um, the, it was a drug deal. So there was like a drug connection to the, uh, the suspect and the two victims. They also said that um, when they went to knock on the door, that the father answered the door. He didn't resist arrest. He knew why they were there. And he just kind of went along with it. So yeah. I think he knew that it was coming. And the with... father had nothing to do with the actual murders. They're saying that he was, it's um, disposing of a corpse. A corpse, it's yeah. He's being charged with and, you know, helping his son yeah. dispose of the bodies. So, so yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's pretty cut and dry. And if they aren't, you know, resisting, who knows? It sounds like it could go very quickly and very simple, but you never know. Yeah. Never know once they get lawyers that, I mean, that are going to try to defend them and, you know, weasel their way out of this. So who knows, who knows what's going to come, but at least there's, there's people in custody. Yeah. Are you sorry for what happened? Did you know Savannah was nine sorry months pregnant? Sorry about that. She was nine months pregnant. 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 ¿Quién mató a Sabana? ¿Quién mató a Sabana? ¿Quién te ayudó? ¿Quién mató a Sabana? ¿Lo hiciste solo? ¿Te arrepientes? ¿Quieres decir algo? 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 That's what you're saying? Huh? Did you need care? Why was it the whole family? Close to Christmas? Remorse? Anything? Why, man? Any remorse? You sorry? Aren't you sorry for lying about what you're saying? I don't know what's going on. So tell us. Tell us. What's going on? Did you shoot them? Did you How did you kill them? them? Are you in the video? Baby. Did you kill them or did you just hide the evidence? How do you know Savannah? Was it retaliation? You sorry? Who killed it? If it wasn't you, who was it then? Watch out, guys. Oh, Who helped you? Who helped you? Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, guys. Close the door. Excuse me. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, guys. her family can start to you know both of their families actually can start to 
process what's going on and what's happened. Find some peace, you know, yeah. hard. So. But today, more charges have been filed against the father and son. Christopher Preciado charged with capital murder. Now two more additional charges of abuse of a corpse and alter, destroy, conceal a human corpse. His father, Ramon, is also charged with abuse of a corpse and the newly added charge of alter, destroy, conceal a human corpse. We're also, for the very first time, hearing from the family, Gatta's father and stepmother speaking to KSAT today. Eric Hernandez reports they're hoping for the full extent of punishment for both men. Upset, anger, um, all kinds of emotions, all kinds of emotions just going through. Gabriel and Raquel Guerra are breathing a sigh of relief after Christopher Preciado and his father Ramon were arrested Wednesday night in the deaths of their son Matthew Guerra, his girlfriend Savannah Soto, and their unborn child Fabian. That was uh, definitely a a relief of mine that, you know, I can hold someone accountable. I've been talking about um, justice for the three of them since it started. Gabriel and Raquel say neither of them know who Christopher and Ramon are. According to the arrest affidavit, Matthew and Savannah met Christopher to allegedly sell them marijuana. We asked the Guerras about that information after they had previously stated that Matthew was trying to turn his life around. Matthew Lozen hasn't made the best decisions, um, but, you know, he, um, I make no excuses for him, but whatever he did, you know, I don't condone that at all. Uh, but that being said, like, it, no one deserves to be murdered, period, for regardless of what kind of activity you're in or what you're doing. Now this case moves to the district attorney's office, and the guerra say they want nothing less than the death penalty for Christopher Preciado. Now it's on the DA. Uh, he had said something about uh, the death penalty, and uh, I'm going to hold him accountable to his word. And um, that's the next process for me, is him confirming that. We did get a statement this afternoon from the district attorney's office about the case, and they say an additional capital murder charge could be added for Christopher for the death of the unborn child, but that hasn't been decided just yet. As far as the death penalty after an indictment, the Capital Crimes Committee will then decide whether to seek the death penalty. Okay. Yeah, there it is. So, um, yeah, so we'll we'll keep up you know, with the story and who knows how long before anything goes to trial. And, you know, they were literally just arrested. So there's, <clears throat> there's a lot more to come. Yeah. But we Absolutely. will, we'll keep on top of all of it and continue to bring you guys whatever's going to happen. Who knows by the time this airs, we'll have more updates. So yes, we'll that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> a lot can happen in 24 hours, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. As we can see. Since our last updated recording on this case, Christopher Preciado confesses and tells a wild tale of what happened. If you haven't heard Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra's killer's confession, it is quite unbelievable. Trigger man Christopher Preciado and his father Ramon were both brought in for questioning on January the 2nd after finding their address inside Matthew's phone. During the interview, Christopher did admit that Matthew and Savannah had been at their home the night of the murders, but that's when the story gets a little bit unbelievable. Upon arrival, Christopher claims that Matthew pulled out a gun and stuck it in his face. He claims that this prompted him to attempt to wrestle away the weapon, which then went off, striking and killing Soto. At this point, the struggle continued with the gun firing again, this time striking Matthew. The father-son duo do confess to dragging the victim's bodies back to their vehicle and driving it a couple streets over, parking them at an apartment complex. Although police believe Christopher and Ramon were partially telling the truth, they do not believe the murders actually took place in the way Christopher described them. It should be noted, up until the shooting, Christopher has had zero criminal record, while his father has had very little. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. So if you guys have any breaking news or any stories, you know, anywhere message that you us. want us to cover, just message us. And thank you to the people that have reached out to us. They We've gotten a lot of DMs um, on Instagram. And so I promise I'm trying to go through all of them, but it's a lot. And um, so, yeah, so I'm trying to go through all of those, but we really appreciate you guys sending them. And if I don't get back to you right away, I'm not ignoring you. I promise <laughs> I will get back she does, to you. She does really try. Yeah. And I was going to open this right here because Helen, the author, Helen Pfeiffer. Yes, she sent this to me. Yeah. And I'm so excited because <laughs> Gina texted me and I'm like, I can't wait to get over there and get it. And I got it. I did make a New Year's, New Year's resolution that I was going to read more in 2024 
I'm so excited. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Helen. Ah! <laughs> you don't understand. I used to read so much when I was younger, like reading junkie. And as I gotten older, I've, you know, I haven't made a point to yeah. s- spend some time reading. And so I am going to start with book one, though. Yeah, so that's not that's not this. book one. But yes. she um, Helen actually sent nine books to <gasps> me for everybody in so our book sweet. club. So, yeah. So she's the sweetest. So thank you so much, yes. Helen. We really appreciate it. And she's the best. She sends us, she's sent us gifts and she sends us stuff all the time. So, yeah. And she's in the UK, by the way. So she's not close. So every time she sends us a package, it's, it's not cheap to ship nine books over here to the United States. So thank you so much. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to get started on book one. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for listening and have a safe week out there, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.